Alrighty folks, it's Matthew, your friendly neighborhood technician, making another video for you out of Boise, Idaho. And uh, today we're going to be looking at a 2000-2001 model Ford Taurus with a 3.0 liter engine in it. Now the complaint on this vehicle is that um, the kiddos, the, the teenagers, I guess they have a couple teenagers that are starting to drive now, got their driver's permit. So uh, the kiddos car here... I guess they were driving or somebody was driving it and it just died at the stoplight at idle and I guess it, it keeps dying and then it won't start or take a while to start up so I've actually been all through the diagnosis I got about halfway through the computer and electronic through the computer diagnosis and realized right off the bat that it was gonna end up being an electronic diagnosis so I uh, hooked up a cool diagnostic tool and it showed me that it, it's an issue with either the crankshaft position sensor, camshaft position sensor, uh, stuff like that. So longer story short, I started chasing wires and looking for things and lo and behold, I found the problem. So I'm going to go ahead and get the car started. And I find it interesting. One of the things that, uh, I've been taught by some of my mentors is if you get into an extremely hard diagnosis and you can't find any hardcore evidence that there's a bad part, one of the things you could start doing is grabbing wire harnesses and wiggling them and seeing if that'll turn the car off because if so, then that'll pretty much tell you exactly where your short is. Your computer will tell you that there's a short in this system, but it's not going to tell you where. Sometimes it can take hours, it can take days, it can even take weeks to find a short. So I'm going to show you how I found this one. So I've got the car started up. And just by the way, this vehicle has 214,000 miles on it. So I got the car started up and after plugging in my computer and pulling a code for a short in the ignition system and doing diagnostics, I started messing around with wires. Now from what I understand, this vehicle has already been in the shop once for this problem and has had a new crankshaft position sensor replaced, which interests me a lot because that's actually where the problem is so let's get down in here and look now watch what I'm about to do I'm gonna reach down here I'm gonna grab a wire watch this without getting caught up in the engine look you see that watch look at that oh wow You see that? Now let's see if we can get it to start again. There we go. Now let's mess with this wire again. Look at that, there it goes. Now let's see if we can even get it to start. There you go. Died again. So, what's going on? Well, I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, we've got our crankshaft position sensor down here. And this. That I'm messing with and trying to get out here, which I may not be able to do. Here we go. And this, my friends. Is the crankshaft position sensor connector all right and so the short I guarantee you is inside of this connector right here why because every time I grab this wire and wiggle it the car dies 
So instead of getting a new crankshaft position sensor, which is what was changed on this at a shop shop, uh, what somebody really needs to do is they need to replace this crankshaft position sensor connector because this is where the short's going to be. Now, a few other things that could possibly be looked into, especially since this car is going to go to some kiddos, are going to be things like possibly changing out the spark plugs. If, uh, if we don't know when they've been changed out last, so go ahead and change that. And then also, since I got to be in here anyways, and I got to open up this wire harness so I can cut out and solder and splice a new uh, crankshaft position sensor connector in, for with 200,000 miles, it might be wise just to go ahead and do spark plugs front and back. And since you're going to do the back spark plugs, go ahead and put a new intake gasket in, plugs, wires. Also, there's some other issues on this car. Like, for example, look at this uh, fuel injector connector. It's held on there with uh, zip ties. That's not how that's supposed to go. That's because somebody else has been in there and they broke the connector and uh, didn't fix it accordingly. Same over here, except for this connector doesn't have zip ties on it. And as you can see, you can just pull it off whenever you want to. So, um, yeah, I would go ahead and, and uh, shoot for, for a tune-up. So that's plugs, wires, uh, upper intake gasket, and then also uh, two new fuel injector connectors. And then from there, the final fix that's going to keep this car from dying out on them is a new uh, crankshaft position sensor wire harness. So there you go, folks. Um, sometimes, you, you know, uh, it makes sense to, before you start plugging in computers, like if you have a vehicle that's just dying out of the blue and you can't explain it, Sometimes it, it does make sense to right off the bat start grabbing wire wire harnesses, jerking them around, seeing if you have a short somewhere in any of those wire harnesses. That's something that my mentor taught me, so it saved me a lot of time. All right, folks, <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and get to fixing this. What I'll do is I'll use this one and I'll make a video to show you how I splice and solder new wire harnesses and connectors in and all that other good stuff. I greatly appreciate you guys coming out, hanging out, watching me, supporting me. If you have any questions or anything, uh, shoot them to me in the comments. I'm pretty well known for getting back to you guys and helping you out with your projects and do-it-yourself issues and stuff like that. So, all right, folks. Well, this is Matthew, your friendly neighborhood technician, signing off.